<laughs> okay, well, I'd really like to welcome uh, Dr. Manwa Lee, who is a uh, Marie Curie Research Fellow here at Royal Holloway. So she uh, completed her PhD in 2019 at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris uh, on the aesthetic body. And she is presenting a paper today entitled From the Care of the Self to the Critique of the Subject, Foucault between Nietzsche and Kant. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, for the introduction. That saves me quite a lot of time, actually. Um, Yes, hi everyone. Um, I'm really glad uh, that today I'm, be, I'm able to uh, share some of my thoughts on uh, this topic, uh, which is currently the focus of my research. Um, as a researcher here based in uh, the University of London Royal Holloway College, right now my focus of uh, research is to um, see the possibility of a global and compatible or kind of synthetic form of critique, which is possible, um, especially in the nowadays contemporary context. And this uh, research project starting from January uh, this year is uh, actually departing from um, a study of the late Foucault and is especially uh, surrounded by the thematic of the character self, what Foucault calls in French, le souci de soi, um, it's actually a quite um, um, complicated and even controversial uh, project that a lot of critiques uh, would have very much uh, many positive and negative, negative things to say. But today I want to pick up one angle of the project of, care of, of the care of the self in Foucault and talk about um, how from this problematic we can um, interpret uh, more fully and more comprehensively um, this notion of um, the philosophy of Foucault and in relation to um, some German idealist uh, traditions of thought. So um, the title of the thesis that I propose today is um, Foucault between Nietzsche and Kant actually. And so I would like to first guide you through uh, the problematic that starts the research of this project, which starts actually with a question, a specific question about the evaluation of the place of Kantian critique in late Foucault. And as many of you might have known that uh, there is this famous um, Kant enigma in the late Foucault, which arised uh, around uh, the, the years of uh, 1978, where um, Foucault actually started to uh, have a series of so-called Kant lectures, first starting uh, at the Sorbonne actually in 1978, um, where he talks about qu'est-ce que la critique, so what is critique, actually the title. Um, and this lecture actually ha has been uh, through a series of um, formulation and evolution. And so um, around 1984, when Foucault is in um, UC Berkeley, he actually turned, changed this um, um, lecture on uh, Kant's uh, critique of um, the Enlightenment into the lecture, um, which is called what is enlightenment? So this very famous text uh, based on this Kant lecture in the 80s is also regarded as a very um, ambiguous, ambivalent point of departure of his late studies. Um, oftentimes, uh, critics would also regard this Kantian turn as an ethical turn in the late Foucault. Because previously, before um, 79, uh, before uh, 1978, um, the thematic of the Enlightenment uh, was introduced. Um, Foucault was engaged more or less in the archaeological and genealogical um, study of, of history. And famously, um, for example, uh, discipline and punishment, um, 
and some other very famous uh, genealogical texts, even including the first volume of the history of um, um, sexuality. But this project, which is thematized as the character self, actually introduced a thematic that is somehow in contradiction with um, the genealogical phase that he has gone through uh, back in the 70s. So basically, there are two dimensions of the care of the self that is included in this study. The first one is actually an extension of his genealogical phase, um, basically focused on the history of subjectivity. And here we are talking about Foucault's extension of Nietzschean genealogy of um, uh, moral ethics or ethical tradition, especially uh, focused on the ethical subject uh, in the European or more broadly speaking, the Western civilization. Um, so the history of historical analysis of subjectivity in relation to truth is a very important dimension of Foucault, late Foucault's study of the care of the self. But at the same time, there is also the second dimension, which is also the critical dimension that bears on what Foucault calls the government of self and others. And this is where Foucault is suspected to have proposed a normative account of ethics in terms of self-relation or the elaboration of the self. So today, um, how to interpret what Foucault calls this ethics of relation. There are mainly three approaches uh, to it in the um, uh, in the uh, contemporary context in the past uh, few decades. Actually, there have been study of, um, for example, uh, Foucault's critical project by uh, Beatrice Hanpile, who actually um, fo uh, has been focused on the um, the inner, the inner conflict between the genealog genealogical historical account of subjectivity and this kind of normative and positivist prescriptive um, sort of ethics of the care of the self. And Han Pyl basically sees a conflict or an inner tension between these two dimensions of the care of the self. And the second one is uh, from the German scholar Martin Zahre. And from his point of view, actually, genealogy as critique is mostly based on a Nietzschean approach of genealogy. And um, in this study of uh, Martin Zahre, actually, Kant has actually uh, represented a not very uh, or some kind of like counter um, prospect uh, that actually. Uh, genealogy of uh, as a critique is supposed to um, reject. So from he, this point of view, um, care of the, the care of the self is actually a genealogy a genealogical project rather than a critical project um, in the sense of the Kantian transcendental uh, critique. So in this sense, Zahre actually regards critique as an um, imminent, concrete, and localized kind of approach of the subject. And the third one is um, Colleen uh, Koopman, who has actually proposed a totally, entirely different one than Zara, which is to um, put Foucault in dialogue with other Kantian or post-Kantian um, critical thinkers, such as Habermas and um, and uh, John Dewey, yes, John Dewey, um, in terms of pragmatism. So how uh, the late Foucault is actually actually engaged with the critical theorists in terms of pragmatism and the pragmatic um, dimension of the, the critique of um, capitalism. So um, from my point of view, however, I think that Foucauldian care, care of the self actually represents an approach, a, a possibility of um, approaching to uh, the subject 
with a very compatible uh, criti critical uh, regard, which means the Nietzschean uh, genealogical um, approach is not necessarily in conflict with the Kantian one. And actually, basically, the Kantian uh, supports uh, to a very large extent the Nietzschean kind of genealogical um, historical um, analysis. Um, so this is basically um, a summary of what is there basically up to now. Um, and my uh, tentative to, to uh, engage with a response that is basically focused on the ethical front of this question. And so, um, before I start to uh, bring in the Kantian side of, the, of this uh, project, I would like to introduce briefly uh, what has been already um, seen as some uh, normative uh, content of this um, notion of the care of self. The first one is um, from a Nietzschean kind of a proto-Nietzschean genealogical perspective, uh, we can see some um, very basic elements of this concept. The first one is the provenance of this concept comes from um, two Delphic prescriptions. Um, the first one is Gnoti Soautun, so know yourself. The other is Egu, so the guarantee of knowing yourself, which is also considered the condition of um, having access to truth um, and having access eventually to the knowledge of the self. And, um, and the brief history of this uh, evolution of, um, of this um, uh, Delphic uh, pre uh, prescriptions contains four main parts. The first one is the immersions part, uh, uh, and it takes shape in uh, Plato's uh, Socrates uh, synthesis of the two uh, prescriptions together, which makes up the um, um, the phrase in Greek, heautun epimelestai. So um, this is the very beginning of a synthetic account of the care of self, which means take care of yourself, but which also implies that is something um, to do before you have actually have access to truth. And the second uh, phase of it is the development, um, which is embodied by uh, Kuha Sri, uh, also take care of yourself in a stoic and Epicurean um, self-cultivation. And the third one uh, involves the transition from um, the care of the self as a purely ethical um, uh, kind of notion to a more moralistic and religious notion. And the third one uh, concerns the rupture in modern times, and it always, of course, starts with um, Descartes' rupture of the care of the self by eliminating um, the second one, the guarantee as the condition to um, knowing yourself. So actually, um, the guarantee here means the kind of ethical work, ethical effort, the practice of the self, um, that you have to go through. It's a process to become uh, the subject of your own action, so a moral or ethical subject. Um, in view of this uh, origin and this kind of um, broader uh, context of the care of self, um, we pick one of the four aspects of this notion, which is the ascesis, or ascesis in, uh, in ancient Greek. It basically means uh, a practice of the self or exercise on the self. And um, it is also inspired by Anna Davidson's essay on care ethics as aesthetics that I have chosen um, ascesis or um, asceticism actually as a point of departure of my study uh, into Foucault's late ethics, uh, because it is really through uh, a citizen or what uh, is what has been called uh, asgesis in the past uh, in ancient Greece that um, we can see uh, an uh, evolution through a few steps of this variation of 
the care of the self through antiquity and modernity. It is one of the aspects that would help us the most to see through how the care of the self has evolved through history till today. So let me just um, flesh out some of the um, notions of a thesis that's involved. And for the first part, I will um, go through, quickly go through the two ancient forms or pre-modern forms, if you like, of ascetic practices. The first one, um, as I have introduced a little bit already, um, comes from Socrates and his followers. Of course, we can easily think of the Stoics, the Epicureans, and even sometimes I would say the Cynic um, as his followers, um, as they all obey, uh, as they all um, promote and practice, practice this kind of um, care of the self in the form of uh, self-mastery. Um, most typically, we can think of uh, the Stoic ataraxy, so tranquility of the soul, as a paradigm for this ancient um, form of self-cultivation or occupation of the self, as Socrates put it. Um, and I, there are uh, obviously a lot of uh, skills that are involved in this form of ascetic uh, practice. And in uh, the history of sexuality, volume two, um, most famously, uh, Foucault has introduced uh, the the skill of uh, the erotic, which is uh, aphrodisia, uh, which means an economy of force uh, with um, a therapeutic effects. So care of the self as ethics in this form, so in the form of um, uh, erotic activities, such as uh, aphrodisia, is not dependent on ethical codes, but on the substance of eth uh, ethics. And the substance of ethics is that which relate to our ethical judgment, and that determines why or how we are ethical. So this kind of substance actually um, is presented as something of a work of art, to be stylized by individuals according their own situations, uh, most typically their needs. So needs for for diet, needs for um, sexual activities. Um, the second one is timing. So what's when is the most proper time uh, for having sex? For, for example, um, most famously, um, Diogenes Diogenes has said that uh, the best time to to have uh, to engage in aphrodisia is actually to uh, when you want to weaken yourself and not when you want to strengthen yourself. And the third uh, kind of dimension of this stylization is the combative status. So the person that is engaged within this uh, activity of aphrodisia also have to be um, put into uh, a combative a struggle of the self against self. So the idea is you have to suffer a little bit um, to get to the truth. Um, so um, especially in Seneca and Demetrius, we see a strong bodily dimension of this preparation um, uh, of the self or practice of the self um, in that it's even to the level of athletic. So it's like you have to prepare yourself for for something that's um, that's difficult, that's um, demanding. Um, so um, up till now, actually, the care of the self is easily considered also as an existence of, um, um, sorry, an aesthetics of existence, which means you do not actually command um, ethical behaviors by codes or laws or any regulations but you allow the individuals to kind of set up their own rules and to be uh, the artist that designed the, the care of the self. And for this form, I'll be more brief um, because this is the self hermeneutics that, are, um, that represent the major form of ascetic practices during the, um, the, 
the early Christian times, namely Tertullian, the Tertullian, so from two to three, uh, the second to the third century, and also Saint Augustine from fourth to fifth century, and uh, Pobasio. Uh, so, so there is this very um, um, Latin phrase, which is Pobasio Pantentia. Sorry for my accent. Uh, which is uh, actually basically means um, substantial or tangible proof. So you have to go through all these um, labra laborious rituals and materialize kind of process um, to have kind of proof uh, for yourself that you have um, kind of been through a process of uh, purifying of the soul. And in Augustine, it is very obvious that this has become uh, even more um, manifest in the verbalization of truth. So uh, truth must be verbalized and materialized in sounds, in words, in text, any form of um, hermeneutics. Um, and we see that there is this idea of uh, the body um, in, in the form of the libido that actually takes a very uh, autonomous uh, role in, in rebelling against God's law. And it is for this kind of um, autonomy that um, the body has to go through uh, a series of, um, of uh, process to prove that it is under surveillance. And at the end, um, the proof will have to uh, show that uh, the libido is killed, modified, and docilized, domesticated, in order to allow for the rebirth of a pure soul. And so then we come to this very notion, the second notion of ascesis, sorry, the third one. But this one is more of a modern um, uh, type of ascetic practice in comparison to the previous three, previous two forms, sorry. Um, so the previous two forms basically were talking, we're talking about ancient um, ascetic practices, especially like really early times. Um, and Foucault doesn't say that much about medieval times, actually, apart from some uh, chapters on uh, St. Augustine in um, the History of Sexuality, uh, Volume 4. So he's talked about a rupture of modernity, of this uh, ascetic practice in modernity. But um, he does see a new kind of form, a new form of creative ascesis that uh, appeared in the course of um, 18th, 19th century. And this starts from um, the Kantian term. Uh, for him, it is Kant that has led to this the, this formation of a modern and at the same time countermodern practice of a more creative or aesthetic form of a thesis. And so as introduced, um, the basic texts are basically um, about uh, Foucault's reinterpretation or reconstruction of uh, Kant's essay on enlightenment. And here, a thesis or a citizen has adopted a new definition, which is the government of self and others. And this kind of government actually eventually in this text, um, what is enlightenment, refers to a sort of critical attitude um, that we, we have towards our time as well as ourselves as subject of history. Um, and most, most um, importantly, the skill involved in this kind of assises is actually the, the, the practice of truth telling in public. And um, um, he takes two types of paradigm of this practice. The first one is uh, Baudelaire, uh, the dandy. Um, so he says dandy has uh, conducted a very important um, form of a thesis that has uh, represented a kind of um, new form of 
uh, a new creative form of aesthetic uh, practice. And, and the body in this form of dandiest uh, uh, aesthetic practice becomes the theatric place for truth to be performed. So I would like to uh, show you this, um, this quote of the dandy, about the dandy. Basically, um, uh, because I have no time to read through it, so I'll just uh, read a few lines. It says, these pages, finally, on the ascetism of the dandy who turns his body, his behavior, his feelings and passions, his existence into a work of art. For Baudelaire, modern man is not the one who sets out to discover himself, his secrets and his hidden truth. He is the one who seeks to invent himself. This modernity does not liberate man in his own being. It forces him to the task of elaborating himself. So this is the form of ascetism that um, Foucault sees in the dandy. However, um, the dandy represents only an aesthetic form of ascetism that falls short to uh, the kind of a, um, the kind of care of the self um, that is derived from the ancient Greek traditions. So, in this case, the next paradigm that Foucault uh, actually presents, especially in the government in the government of the self and others, volume one and two, he basically talks about a kind of a cynicism that will help to reconstruct aesthetic of ex existence uh, in modern time as a kind of a ethical but also political form of um, a citizen. But this talk will mainly focus on the ethical side of um, this, uh, this uh, cynicism. Um, now, um, so I propose to to talk about ascetism in terms of uh, self-transformation. So this is the third part of my presentation. Um, um, according to Kupman, for example, um, ethics in Foucauldian term can no longer be explicited in terms of, um, of a kind of moralistic uh, or altruistic form, or even um, the form um, that's based on uh, um, the ideal of freedom that would be at the core of Kantian critique. But uh, as Koopman uh, notes, uh, actually, uh, self-relation has been boiled down to a kind of uh, process of self-transformation. So with um, how to uh, interpret uh, the care of the self in terms of self-transformation will be a very uh, useful um, way to look inside the kind of mechanism that have been um, um, engaged and operated in these three kinds of um, acidic uh, practices. And I agree with him, though I think that um, in his studies, the notion of transgression has not been really um, uh, underlined, and uh, but it has a very important role to play in the explanation of um, ethics um, as uh, as um, self relation. So um, the first kind of transgression, the notion of transgression that I propose here, is coming from Nietzsche's um, claim on the death of God. So um, Foucault actually takes the fine, the fine, um, the finite God as a kind of um, point of departure for um, the modern kind of um, border uh, transgression kind of um, critique. So he says that a, a profanity in a world that no longer recognizes the positive sense of the sacred isn't that more or less one could call transgression. So here, obviously, he takes the idea of um, transgression as affirmation. So affirmation of the death of God, actually, that uh, man is left alone with this 
access to truth, with this access to something of an infinity, um, something of uh, no limits, for example, reason. Um, um, and then um, something that's yeah out of our um, out of our control, for example, something that's beyond us. So man is left alone with this access to infinity because of the death of God. But at the same time, this kind of um, affirmation is not positive because it's also about a contestation or resistance of these limits. Um, so Philippe Sabot has famously uh, has actually um, relate this uh, transgression with the notion of uh, eroticism. So uh, it basically it's not about sexual liberation, but about the usage of the forbidden, uh, which is related to a, a spiritual experience in the mystical mystical order, and without the limits of God's law. So. In this kind of uh, erotic sense, erotic uh, activity, uh, the practice of this kind of transgression would be also mixed or evolved with, involved with a kind of danger or risks of such experience. And I would even uh, take it more further to say that Foucault's uh, genealogical writing um, in, in his own words, actually represent a kind of um, impossible experience that guides him to live the impossible, the unlivable, uh, the, the normally inapproachable life. So this is the first um, notion of transgression that has an origin in Nietzsche. But the second form of transgression um, I would like to uh, suggest comes from Kant's uh, notion of mensch. Um, so um, most famously, actually, this is the target of Foucauldian uh, critique in uh, especially, for example, um, the order of things where man uh, has been um, subjected to knowledge um, or to a discourse of uh, uh, rationality in modern times because he has become the object of uh, of studies, of scientific uh, discourses. Um, but at the same time, um, it seems that Kant has also set up a kind of um, uh, subjectivity that is uh, uh, embodied with a new kind of freedom, which is uh, the freedom of rebel, rebelling against this kind of restrictions. Um, so Foucault says, since Kant, the role of philosophy is to prevent reason from ex exceeding the limits given to experience, but it is also since this epoch that the with the development of the modern time, the modern state, and the political government of society, philosophy has the function of supervising excessive power of political rationality. Again, this is the second time we mention politics today. But I would like to invite you to focus only on the ethical um, dimension for now. So um, what does it mean then in this sense, transgression? It means that the subject, so us as finite man, um, as the object of uh, scientific study, knowledge, uh, discipline or norms, um, at the same time, it has this um, possibility of, um, of interrogating uh, that kind of rationality that we're presupposing in these disciplines of um, scientific inquiry. Um, so it all boils down to the notion of limit um, that is at its core uh, pointing towards the limit of reason. So most famously in Kant's three critiques, he set up this um, transcendental structure um, that allows us to explore the phenomena, so what we can know, and to leave alone the noumena we cannot know. But there is a kind of trend, uh, there is this uh, reason that as a faculty of man allows us to, to transcend, uh, to have experience of transcendence uh, from uh, the experience of the noumen, uh, from the phenomena. So uh, 
in this regard, actually Kant himself set up this model of having a limit, but then also being able to transgress it. Um, this is why I regard transgression in the Nietzschean sense in the same lineage of transgression in a Kantian sense. And that gets us a re redefinition of the care of the self as self-referential critique of the subject. So the subject and the object of this kind of critique is us, and always in plural. And so the final point um, that I'm going to propose is that aside from transgression, there is also a notion of transcendence that has maybe a little bit overlooked by previous studies. Um, so transcendence has given has been given a kind of a, a new place in Foucault's um, uh, care of the self, and um, and this prominent uh, and the transcendence has a prominence a provenance also in Kantian philosophy, but this time not uh, directly in the transcendental um, uh, critique, but actually in uh, one of his work on um, on anthropology. Uh, so it's anthropology from a pragmatic perspective. And as early as 1961, actually, Foucault has translated this Kantian work and has published his introduction to Kant's anthropology as a, uh, as a complementary dissertation to his doctoral dissertation, which was published under the name of Madness and Civilization later on. Um, so it seems that the Kantian term wasn't of a real turn, but it all it always been like a like um like a ghost that's haunting uh, Foucauldian um, um philosophy. So um the citation here uh, is about how the anthropology is a very pragmatic sense of critique that it does not consider man as belonging to the moral republic of minds that would be called practical, nor to the civil society composed of subjects of law that would be that would then be called juridical. But it considers man as citizens of the world. To be a citizen of the world is to belong to a region at once as concrete as that of a specific set of juridical rules and as a universal as that of the moral law. So it seems that this Kant sounds very different from Kant in the three critiques, right? Um, so according to uh, Alan Wood, man has turned into this that burger which means citizen of the world, which is always historically and socially situated because he has been relocated outside of this abstract universal um, structure of space and time that Kant has set up in uh, his former three critiques. So in this case, we have to make a distinction between a universal abstract subject and this universal pragmatic subject. And it is with this notion of subjectivity that uh, Foucault has reconstructed what he regards as uh, cynicism. So the example that we have, the most famous, famously and notoriously um, um, example, uh, Diogenes, has actually embodied this kind of um, universal pragmatic subjectivity. The first point about this um, subjectivity is that truth practice doesn't have to begin with logos. So it is through the body of the cynic that truth is manifest in its most imminent and transcendent way. Imminent because it is manifest already uh, within the body as a theatrical place um, for the others to watch in the city. And the second one is transcendent, right? 
transcendent means that this kind of experience also gives um, Diogenes an, a feeling of something that's more universal than his individual was uh, his individual. And so the universal, the kind of universality that's related to um, logos or reason is both internal to the self and separated from the self. And this separation gets us to the second point of um, the notion of the practice of truth um, as desubjectivation. So the contestant, uh, the there is this um, form of uh, desubject, uh, this uh, process of desubjectivation that has been going on with the practice of truth also in the Diotinus. It is because by contesting um, uh, social norms, institutions, and even governmental um, officials um, rule, uh, that they're ruling, for example, famously uh, Alexander the Great. Um, Diogenes has been mostly um, very disputable and very um, uh, militant against this kind of uh, social structures. And so um, it shows that um, Diogenes, by rebelling against the limits um, of freedom of this kind of uh, social structures on the self, it also um, creates a bond between this kind of uh, uh, resistance of limits uh, of his own person and also the limits that has been lived and experienced by the others. So it is in this sense um, that I call that the experience is uh, transcendent in the very horizontal way. It means that it go past the person um, because at the same time, it's a rebellion for the sake of the others. Um, so this is, this leads to the conclusion of um, my study. Um, the first conclusion is um, the care of the self is a form of critique, and it is about the critique of the self as the subject of knowledge. But in this sense, in the Foucauldian sense, it is uh, a practical knowledge instead of a theoretical or abstract knowledge. And it also, I affirm that it borrows from Kantian premise, the Kantian premise of the possibility um, of critique, which is um, the setup of limits. So uh, limits exist um, from this kind of um, um, universal scope. Uh, but I have to say that um, Foucault has narrowed down the universality to the pragmatic and empirical uh, and concrete forms uh, of limits that is directed towards social and political and um, uh, societal um, empirical anthropological forms of limits. There is the, there exists a universality of these limits within this um, this uh, empirical uh, scope, but he does not mean a universality of of an abstract world. And um, so this is basically my conclusion about. Um, my some of my uh, research of the previous stage, uh, but I would like to then move to from a, an ethical uh, response to this question to a political response to this question, um, especially in regard to uh, Foucault's uh, biopolitic, uh, where he um, definitely affirms um, this kind of uh, a citizen's uh, connection with the neoliberal, the neoliberal um, uh, political e economy that has been um, seen in America as well as Germany, and I would say nowadays even across the globe. Um, um, and so I think uh, the next stage or the next direction of um, of this study could be um, an extension on a, a political dimension of the government of the self as a form of critique. 
So basically, this is um, what I propose today as a, as a discussion, as a share of uh, knowledge to uh, my dear colleagues and friends. So I would like to stop there and um, to, to listen to what you have to say about it.